Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, today we're making Bugs Bunny. So, for this project, you're going to need some light gray. I'm using a Craft Smart for that. This white, I think, is a Loops and Threads. Impeccable. Can't be positive. Just a bunch of, uh, just a little bit of a scrap pink for his nose. Some scrap black for his pupils and whiskers and his little mouth. And that is it. The amounts will be at the top of your screen as I'm rhyming these off. Then you're going to need a 4.5 and a 5. I kind of bounced between the two of them depending on what I was making. So before we start, I want you to take some of your ball before we start crocheting with it. And I want you to roll it into little balls because we're going to need some... We're going to have to stay attached to our legs, so we're going to need some bobbins is what I call them. So I just wrap around my fingers and I make these little bobbins for these little pieces of yarn that we're going to need that we're not going to be able to get into our ball with. So let's do that before we even start. Because it's going to be very helpful when we get there. <laughs> that we have these little bobbins. You only need one. You only need one bobbin, but make it a decent sized bobbin. That should be good. So these are called butterfly bobbins. So if you make a decent sized butterfly bobbin before we start, you will thank me later. So we're going to start off with white. We're going to make our thumbs, fingers, and then the hand and build the arm. So you're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochet. If you're not a fan of the magic ring, then you can do a chain two and put six single crochets in that first stitch. This is built in amigurumi, so we're not slip stitching and we're not chaining two. We're going right into the next stitch. You're going to need a stitch marker. And this next round is going to be just one single, well, the next five rounds are just going to be one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So this is your thumb. It's about as big as we're going, so you can go in and fasten off. So you need to make two of these. You just need a little uh, um, tying tail. So you can stuff it if you want. I did not stuff my fingers. I, um, I've started this new thing <laughs> where I don't stuff my fingers because it ends up making it look worse than they would just normally. 
So um, I'm going to slap the pattern up on the screen right now and you can quickly just kind of whip off your other thumb and I'll meet you right back here to do the fingers. So, um, now that your thumb is done, we can move on to fingers. You need to make three of them. We need to do one arm at a time because the third finger you can't fasten off from. So, we start with a magic ring of six single crochets. You're going to do the same thing as the thumb. You're going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches, but you're going to do it for six rows instead of five. So I'm just going to count to 36. So that's my 36 stitches, that's my 6 rows. I'm going to go in and fasten off. So I can fasten off my first 2 fingers, but not my last finger. And you just need sewing tails for both of these guys. So my stragglers, the only thing that I stuff my finger with are these stragglers. Other than that, I do not stuff my thumbs, my fingers, or anything. So go ahead and make three of these fingers, but don't fasten off the third finger. And I'll see you right back here. So um, this is my 36th stitch, so I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to fasten off or anything. I am just going to tuck my uh, straggler down inside here. So I've got my three fingers. This gets sewn to this and this gets sewn to this using two stitches for each finger. So this is normally where my stitch marker would be. So starting right next to the stitch marker, I'm going to use two stitches. I cannot. And then again, these, they can be shoved down somewhere to be, uh, you know, fill. If you don't have clover hooks, you might find it difficult to do that. These are kind of rubbery handles, so it kind of helps. So my other finger on. So holding it like this, you know that this has a couple of stitches, so you're going to go skip that one, that one, and go into the next one to do your two stitches. That should make it even.
go. So I've got my three fingers together. The thumb goes on after we start our rounds. So our first round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. I need you to get 21 stitches. So um, if our numbers don't match, then obviously you're going to struggle. That's one single crochet, and then I'm going to pop over to the other finger and do my increase. One single crochet. Pop over to the other finger and do my increase. So that's my 21st stitch. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 21 stitches. So now we're going to decrease. <laughs> I know it seems counterproductive, but I just needed a specific shape. I had a shape in my head, so I was trying to create that. So that's one single crochet. And then you can do whatever decrease that you're comfortable with doing. So you're going to have 14 stitches when you're done this round. We're going to sew the thumb on here. So grab one of your thumbs. I go to the opposite side. Fold it in half and find your two stitches so that you can use those to sew with. So again, you can just shove this down somewhere. So now your thumb is sewn on. I continue. So now we're going to do four single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 15 stitches. That is my four single crochets, so right before my thumb, I have a decrease. So you should have 15 stitches and this is what it should look like. This will relax. This won't always stick up like this. It will stick up like that probably. You should have 15 stitches. For the next three rows you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches.
So that's my three rows. That's what you should have at this point. So for this next round, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be working in the front loops because we're going to need to get into the back loops later. So we're going to work into the front and we're going to leave these back loops to get into for the, the, um, the gray color. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So in the front loops, you're going to do four single crochet increase using only the front loops. We need to make the cuff. That's what we're making now. Bugs Bunny won't be Bugs Bunny without the cuff. That's my four single crochets. And then my next front loop will get the increase of two stitches in the same space. I repeat, so we'll bring it up to 18 stitches. So for the next five rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches and then we're going to fold it down and we're going to get into these back loops with a different color. So for the next five rows though, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So that is my five rows. We can stuff this hand. We're gonna, um, let's fasten off first. So we're gonna fasten off and we're gonna reattach with a different color. So fasten off with your white and then we're gonna stuff this. So you don't, you only need a weaving tail. You don't need a sewing tail or anything. So this gets folded down And all these back loops that we left exposed when we use the front loops, that's what we're going to get into. Now this doesn't have to be rolled down that far after we're done. We're just doing it so we can get those back loops. So first thing is first, let's weave. I didn't put a whole lot of stuffing in the hand, but I did put some. I just didn't put any in the fingers. So just a wee little bit. We'll be stuffing it more. So make sure this is rolled down enough so you can see your back loops. Get your gray. Make a slip knot. We're going to reattach wherever, wherever you decide. So this round only had 15 stitches. So you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 15 back loops.
So that's my my 15th stitch. Um, we're not slip stitching, we're still working in amigurumi. So you're just going to go into your next stitch and for the next 16 rows you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. Stuff as you go and I will see you on the other side. So this is what you should have. So when you fasten off, you have to fasten off at the, the front or the back, depending on which hand you're putting on. So if you're, for example, if this is going to be your right hand, the thumb has to be pointed away from the body. So your fasten off point is going to have to be over here for your thumb to be pointing out when you sew it to the doll. If your thumb is going to be on your left hand, which is, I mean, this hand works both ways, then, yeah, your fasten off point is going to have to be over here for your thumb to be pointing out. So, either way, either here or here is your fasten off point for, for your arms. So, I'm just going to do a couple of stitches to go over there. So, I don't know, this might be my fasten off point because I still got to sew across, right? So I'm probably going to sew four stitches across. So I'm just going to fasten off over here. It doesn't have to be right in the middle because you got to sew, right? So you only need a sewing tail. So this cuff can get rolled back up a little bit. It doesn't need to be pulled down that far. I know we pulled it down to find all those loops, but there, your cuff can be returned to normal. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna put the patterns up till the end of the chapter, and then I'll put all the patterns up for you to make all your pieces. And um, so the legs will be last because we have to stay attached to one of them so um, next will be ears so for this ear we start with gray we're going to need pink for the inside of the ear part we're going to start with gray and we're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. So we want this ear to be pointy, so we're not going to start off traditionally. We're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of six. So your stitch marker would go here. I'm just going to count to six because I'm familiar with where my stitches are. If you're not, then um, you can always go by the um, this thing too. The straggler guy. Speaking of, I'm going to pull this tight, I'm going to make a knot, I'm going to kind of pop it around to make my life easier. So your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. and. Yeah, so I'm going to weave this in a little bit, even though I just did a knot. That's one single crochet. And then your next stitch is the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. 
This will give me nine stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So now we uh, increase smaller than we would have if we would have started traditionally. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 15 stitches. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 21 stitches. Your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase. So this is what you should have. You should have 24 stitches. For the next seven rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And then when we come back, uh, we'll start decreasing. So this is what you should have. That's my seven rows done. So we're going to start decreasing now. And we're going to start with a six single crochet decrease. Every single decrease that we do, we're going to do a row of one single crochet in between. So I'm just going to put the two things on my screen um, just so you're aware ahead of time that there will be that extra row on my screen. So, the first round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 21 stitches. The marker is number one. The 
that is six single crochets and then your decrease any kind of decrease that you want to do this will be followed up by a row of one single crochet in each of the 21 stitches and I will see you on the other side So your next two rounds are going to be five single crochets and a decrease and then one single crochet in each stitch. So five single crochets and a decrease will bring you down to 18 stitches. That's number one. That is five single crochets. If you wanted to do invisible decreases, that's the one I'm doing. You use the front loops only, so you're going to go into the first front loop, pop around to the second front loop, then that's when you yarn over, pull through those two, and finish the stitch. Cuts down on the amount of gapping because you still got that behind it, so it's not as noticeable. Anyway, finish this round and then do your one single crochet in each stitch, and I will see you right back. We're not stuffing this by the way. So your next couple of rounds, first one's going to be four single crochets and a decrease. This will bring it down to 15 stitches and then I want you to follow it up with one single crochet in each of those 15 stitches. Your next round, uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. The first one's going to be three single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring it down to 12 stitches. And then you're going to finish it with two rows of one single crochet in each stitch. So that was my two rows. I just counted to 24. So you can go into your next stitch and fasten off. So you're going to need a sewing tail. And ultimately you can make the decision whether to sew on open or whip stitch it closed. Uh, it was very difficult to sew on open, but that's me. I am not a good sewer. So, 
Now that we've got the outside of the ear done, we're going to move on to the pink part of the ear. So grab your pink. We're going to start the pink part of the ear off with a chain four. And I want you to do three single crochets back up. Those are the only working stitches you have. The fourth one was still on your hook, so. Three single crochets, chain one, turn your work. Whenever you see anything on my channel written with brackets around it, it generally means the same space, or it's the count for the row, or it's a special sequence. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, not making your life any easier, huh? Okay, so the first stitch gets two single crochets in that same space. Then you're going to do one single crochet, and then two single crochets in the last space. Chain one, turn your work. So for the next two rows, you should have five stitches. For the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these five stitches. And now we're going to increase again. So two single crochets in this first stitch. And now you're going to do three single crochets across. And two single crochets into the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. And for the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each stitch. So well, that's three rows for me. So now we're going to start to decrease. You're going to see it written as SC2 TOG, and that just means to single crochet two together, which is just a decrease. So starting in this first stitch, go in and pull up a loop, go into your second stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. That's an SC2 TOG. And then I want you to do three single crochets and then SC to tug the last two stitches. The reason we write it like that is because when I have my three single crochets in there, if I was to write a decrease, somebody would think it was a three single crochet decrease, but it's not. It's only the two and the two stitches. So that's why it's written differently. So you should have five stitches again, so for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of the five stitches. So we're going to SC2 tog these first two stitches. We're going to do one single crochet and then SC2 tog these last stitches. Chain one, turn your work. Now I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these three stitches. And then I want you to SC3 tog, which means three together.
that's enough. You need a sewing tail to sew it to the inside of the ear. So when I built this, I built this to be like the fourth row up. <coughs> Excuse me. I like to use this as an anchor. And I generally tie with it later. But you can do whatever you want with this guy. So that's our ear all done. Now Bugs Bunny generally has big long like longer ears but um, for my guy I just didn't want them flopping all the time and I really didn't want to put a wire in it so that's the ear I did. So the last biggest thing that we can do for this chapter is the feet. So, the feet, we start with gray. I'm going to change my mat again, and I'll meet you right back here. So, get your gray. We start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. You should have 12 stitches. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase and this will bring you up to 18 stitches. That's one single crochet always with the marker so we jump right into our increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. So you should have 18 stitches. For the next five rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And then we're going to switch to white. So 
So this is uh, my last stitch for my row five, and uh, we're going to be changing to white. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull up a loop, and I'm going to finish that last stitch with my white. So, <clears throat> we're going to increase a little bit with the white. We're going to do a two single crochets and an increase. Let me get my marker out of the way. So that's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. So you should have 24 stitches. For the next five rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And yes, we do stuff this a little bit. So that's my five rows. So we're going to start decreasing now. So you can put stuffing in this at any time. Just not a lot of stuffing. So our next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's two single crochets. And then I'm doing my invisible decreases. So I'm going to stuff mine because I only have one more round to do. We only have one more round to do. So I didn't put a whole lot in the bottom part. But I did. So when I don't want to overstuff it, I put my hand down to kind of keep it more flat. And this needs to be squishy because we're going to make a foot out of it. So this needs to be kind of squishy. So it can't be overfilled. Your last round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. This will bring you down to 12 stitches, which is good for cinching. So you can fasten off. You need a cinching tail, you don't need a sewing tail. I'm going to put a little bit more stuffing in that.
So you're going to go in the front loop and out the, the next front loop for a cinch. So I'm going to pop across and go through the loopy loop, make a knot that way, and then I'm going to make a knot this way. Push my stuffing up. So it should look thinner here and then go big. That's what it should look like. So we're not done, don't go anywhere. We need to get gray. You need to cut off a piece. I don't know how long, just long. A long piece. It's always better to have too much than not enough. So you're gonna have to pick an area in your foot and it's completely up to you where you come in. But you're gonna come in wherever you come in and you got to make three toes so I'm about the third stitch from the gray don't pull this all the way through but you need to make three toes so you're going to come back down through that stitch we're going to go around twice and then you got to pull Starting it's always the difficult part. Trying to find that trying to find that spot. So when you come back down, go back down, but come up in a different spot. I don't want to be in that spot. I'm going to come over here. Because the spot kind of has to match the spot over here. Sort of like that to make the foot. And then you're going to go back down in there. And I want you to meet up with this guy over here. So that'll be your twice. Make your foot. So that's your foot. And then these two here just so your foot doesn't get loose. We're going to tie these two in a double knot. And then we can weave these two away. So that's our foot. That's how we're going to do our foot. <clears throat> the next thing that we build is going to be the leg and we sew it to the foot. So don't worry, all this will be up on my screen after chapter one is done. So the next thing we're going to do is the leg, which is all gray. And the leg is long. So, um, I'm probably going to uh, leave you with homework before 
the screens come up because the leg is 20 rows. But I'm probably not going to sit here and do 20 rows with you. I'm just going to leave you with the 20 rows to do for homework, then build all your other parts and meet you back for chapter two. So that's what the lineup is going to be. For this leg, we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch, bringing you up to 12 stitches. The marker goes on the first stitch, not the second stitch. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So this, oh gosh, do my not. So this will bring you up to um, 15 stitches. The reason I'm not keeping it traditional um, is because I didn't want it to be brought up to 18 stitches. And that would have been what it would have been. So that's why I did the three single crochets and an increase. And that's as big as we're going. So for the next 20 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So I want you to finish this, the 20 rows, and then um, I'm going to put the pattern up for all of these guys after. So it's going to be, it's going to be a while. <laughs> And then I will meet you back. So when I meet you back, you should have two arms, <laughs> two ears, and two legs. So when you're done the 20 rows, you're just going to mattress stitch this leg onto the heel. But when we meet back, I'll meet back with one of them that needs to be done, in case you don't understand what I mean. And we'll sew it on together. Um, or both of them, if you don't know what I mean. Obviously, you're not going to do either one. But once you're done building this leg, the, the open part is on the top. That's what we're going to use to crochet the body onto. And then this closed part is what gets sewn down to the bottom of the foot, gets mattress stitched right to this heel. So, um, yeah, so that's your homework. 20 rows uh, to build the leg and then all your parts. So I will see you in chapter 2.
So, welcome back to chapter two. We are going to sew our legs to our foot. Just like this. So we're going to do a mattress stitch since we're sewing the closed end to the foot. So just get a piece of gray yarn and you're going to make a slip knot on one end. This is the way I do it. If you already know how to mattress stitch and you have your own way of doing it, then knock your socks off. You don't need to do what I'm doing. So we're going to put it as close to the back as we can, but we need to pick up these bars. So, but it should pull it down. But for starters, go as low as you possibly can on your leg. And you're going to pull that through and go through the loop. And then you're going to pull tight and you make a second knot. That's how we're going to attach. Put that as far back as you can, but a mattress stitch is going to be basically picking up these bars, picking up those bars on the leg and picking up the bars on the feet. Picking up the next bar on the leg and the next bar, I mean we kind of got to go around in a circle, on the foot. Now you don't need to pull this until you're completely all the way around, but I like to pull mine especially just to make sure I'm getting it in a good enough location back here that it's not, it's not going to be too far forward or too far out so that I can just adjust what I'm doing. So that's all you're going to do. You're just going to kind of keep going around like that. Grabbing some from up top, grabbing some from the foot. And the closer together you can stay, the better off. So just make sure you're pulling it fairly tight so you can get it all on there properly. And then when I come back around, I'm just going to put one more in here, even though I've stretched it. <laughs> I'm going to pop out the magic ring. I'm going to pull that tight. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to bring him down and pop out the magic ring as well. Tie these in a double knot. This is just going to secure what I just did. And then I'm going to weave. So that's how we sew the leg. to the foot. So, go ahead and sew your other leg on and I'll meet you right back here. We can build the body bridge so we can start the body. So, I got my legs all sewn to my little feet. So we're still attached to this, as you know, so um, let's grab our bobbin that we made and um, uh, we'll get the body bridge done because, I don't know, the gap's about like that. He's got a gap between his legs, about like that. So we're going to build a body bridge to go in between. So we'll grab your bobbin. You're going to make a slip knot. And 
and you're going to chain six. And you're going to do five single crochets back up. Chain one, turn your work, and for the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these five stitches. That's my three rows, so you can fasten off. That is it. So you're going to need a sewing tail. This end, let me show you. We already have a sewing tail um, from our leg. So you can tuck this little guy away because I didn't make him long enough for sewing and I didn't think about it. <laughs> But I always keep the one for my leg just in case. So. So each end. Get my bobbin out of the way. So this goes. lengthways like that that was our chain five going this way so this guy over here I have my sewing piece over here but I think I want to move it over because he's kind of in the middle of everything and I think I just want to move him over here so that it's even So now we have this to crochet around for his leg gap. So first things first, we're going to do a one single crochet increase all the way around. So when you get here, if you put four stitches on this side, you need to make sure you put four stitches only on that side. On my stitch marker. So that's number one. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. The magic number is going to be 48. So that's my 48 stitches. That's what it should look like. For the next six rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches. 
and I will see you on the other side. So, this is what you should have. <laughs> it's hard to show you. Set them down like that. This is what you should have. So, uh, we're going to start decreasing. Nothing, nothing about Bugs Bunny is fat, so... Or even chubby. So, we're going to do a four single crochet decrease. number one that's four single crochets and then I'm gonna do invisible decreases and that's done in the front loop so you go into the front loop and you yoink around to the second front loop yarn over pull through finish the stitch you can do whatever decrease that you're comfortable with doing I'm not telling you in any which way shape or form which one you need to do just continue to do four single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 40 stitches. I should have 40 stitches and for the next two rows I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 40 stitches So this is what you should have. We're going to decrease again and we're going to do a three single crochet decrease and this will bring you down to 32 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. So you should have 32 stitches. For the next four rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 32 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is what it should look like at this point. So we can start to stuff this because um, we're going to continue to decrease because we need to sew the arms on soon in the next couple of rows. Well, <laughs> quite a few rows left to do. But um, I do definitely want you to make sure that this leg, these legs at the top are nice and full because you want him to be able to like right in here to you know stand up on his own so pack that right in there It's 
make sure it's really decently full in there. That's why I was kind of packing it down like that. Just don't put so much in that you see the stuffing through your guy because you shouldn't see the stuffing through your guy at all. So your next decrease round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 24 stitches. So you should have 24 stitches. For the next eight rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And then when we come back, we're going to sew our arms on. So I am back. I've got my eight rows done. And I got my arms ready to sew on. But first I want to stuff this a little bit. I've stuffed it and sewed one arm on. I'm going to untangle myself here. So when you sew your arms on, you got to remember the thumb points out. So you can uh, tuck all your stuff down inside. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to make my, my new stop and go point this, this one. So that's only one back from, so in my PDF I said five stitches, but I don't think I used five stitches. I think I only used four, but... You can use whatever you want, but this next row that we're going to be doing um, has to have 40 stitches. That's the magic number. So all you're going to do is one single crochet in each stitch. Just make sure that you get 40 stitches. So I got 40 stitches. I, did, I wasn't doing too bad until I was coming along here and had to do a decrease right here for my last stitch to be 40 or I would have had 41. So I didn't do too bad. <laughs> so I have 40 stitches. So we're going to decrease now to bring the arms up a little bit. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. Let's put this over here. Lay this guy down a bit. It's, it's so awkward. It's so awkward sometimes. You have to find the right spot when your dolls are this tall. That's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease. So I'm doing invisibles in the front loops. This will bring you to, down to 30 stitches. So that's my 30 stitches. 
Your next round is going to be one single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 20 stitches. There. So now we're going to do three single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to the neck size. And the reason I'm doing this is just because I want a tiny wee little decrease. So this is only take care of four stitches. So now you should have 16 stitches. So we can stuff it again. We've stuffed the arms full, so I would actually suggest this time with this doll to not stuff the shoulders. So this is what you should have. This is what your top should look like. Well, all the way down your body. But. So um, for the next three rows, that's going to be his neck. So we're at 16 stitches. The next three rows, we're building his neck. So you're just going to do one single crochet in each of these 16 stitches. And I know he has a longer neck, but without the risk of having to put a wire in this, I didn't want to go any bigger. So this is what you should have, this little tiny neck. Um, so we're going to start building the head. So we have 16 stitches and we're going to double that. So we're going to put two single crochets in each stitch and we're going to bring this up to 32 stitches to start his head. So it's going to get pretty squishy. So, this is what your head should look like. So now we're going to do one single crochets and an increase. And that's about as high as we're going with his, how big his head is. That's one single crochet and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will bring you up to 48 stitches and be really, really, really squishy. So this is what you should have. It should be all wavy and out of shape. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. So you should have 48 stitches. For the next six rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches. And I will see you on the other side.
So this is my six rows. So this is what you should have. So we're just going to start decreasing really slow to shape his head properly. But he's got big cheeks. So with this and then the other part that I'm going to do, um, it'll help accentuate these cheeks of his. So this next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. And I want you to follow this decrease up with one single crochet in each stitch. It'll all be on my pause screen. So the marker's number one. That is six single crochets and then your decrease. So this um, <clears throat> this next round will bring you down to 42 stitches. And like I said, I want you to follow it up with one single crochet in each of those 42 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So that's my last two rows. This is what you should have. Your next few rows, the first one is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. And then I want you to follow it up with two rows of one single crochet in each of the stitches. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your decrease. So your next few rounds, this first one is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 30 stitches. And then I want you to do two single or two rows of one single crochet in each of those 30 stitches. So your next few rows are going to be three single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 24 stitches. And then I want you to follow it up with one, two rows of one single crochet in each stitch. So we can start stuffing this. Make sure you get enough stuffing in the neck area. So your next couple of round, few rounds is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 18 stitches and then I want you to follow it up with two rows of one single crochet in each of those 18 stitches and then that will be the end of it.
So, yes, he has a head like a chimney. However, <laughs> it's not going to stay like this. But you can fasten off now that your two rows are done. We're going to cinch this shut. So you just need a cinching tail. Let's finish stuffing this. So make sure it's really, 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 really well stuffed because when we cinch, you don't want any wrinkles. We are sewing ears, obviously, to the top of his head. He's a rabbit, after all. A bunny. So we're going to go in the front loop of the first stitch and out the front loop of the second stitch all the way around. So I want you to pull, you can pop across, make knot. I like to do it both ways. All closed up. So that's what his head should be. Funny looking shape. So that is going to be the end of chapter two. Uh, we've done a fair bit. So chapter three will be the belly patch all the way up to his neck. We're going to do the great big cheeks. I mean, we're going to finish this guy, but I'm just letting you know what's coming. The eyes. The eyes are all crocheted. The nose is sewn on. Whiskers are sewn on. The teeth are crocheted. The only thing I want you to do to meet me back before chapter three is sew your ears on. That's it. Because um, these are the hardest things for me to do on camera is sewing the ears on. Now you can whip stitch this end shut if it makes your life easier. So if you're going to do a, um, I'll just show you what I mean. If you're going to do a mattress stitch for these ears, which is my suggestion to you, then whip stitching it might actually be easier because you're not going to need to get into these stitches anyway. So I didn't do that for my last one and I really struggled to get them, but I mean I suck at sewing, but I mean I really struggled to get them straight and hold them there and it was, it was a struggle. So for a mattress stitch you get into the post, you get onto the post anyway to sew. So it doesn't matter if these are whip stitched closed or not but I think it would be easier if you're going to do a mattress stitch so obviously you know how bunny ears get sewn on so yeah so um, that's going to be your homework before we go into chapter 3 so I will see you in chapter 3 with our ears sewn on Hi guys, welcome back to chapter three. This is where we're gonna do the belly patch. It's great big cheeks, teeth, and you know, everything else just to finish this guy off. Let's jump right into it. So white is the color of the day. White and black. And a little bit of pink. Those are the colors for today. So um, let's start with his belly. Let's do his belly patch. So using my five millimeter. The only thing I think I change to the four millimeter or four point five millimeter for his cheeks. Other than that, I think everything is a five. I'm pretty sure. 
So we're going to start with a chain six. I want you to do five single crochets all the way back up. You only have five working stitches, so it'll take you right to the top. Chain one, turn your work. So for the next two rows, I just want you to put five single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. So we're going to start to increase. So this first stitch here is going to get two single crochets. You'll see this written in brackets. On my channel, brackets mean a number of things, but one of them is the same stitch. Then you're going to do three single crochets across. And in this last stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. So now you should have seven stitches for the next six rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these seven stitches. So that's my six rows, and now I want you to do another increase. I'm going to put two single crochets in this next stitch. We're going to do five single crochets across. And in this last stitch, we're going to put two single crochets. So now you should have nine stitches, and for the next three rows, we're just going to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. So we're going to increase again. We're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch. We're going to do seven single crochets across and then two single crochets in the last stitch. So now you should have 11 stitches. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 11 stitches. So we're going to increase again, two single crochets in the first stitch, nine single crochets across, and two in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You should have 13 stitches. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of those. So we're just doing this for one row.
Chain one, turn your work. So two single crochets in this stitch. You're going to do 11 stitches across and two single crochets in the last stitch. And the next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches, just for this one row. And one last increase, two single crochets in the first stitch, 13 single crochets across, and two single crochets in the last stitch. There we go. So you should have 17 stitches. For the next 10 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 17 stitches. So this is my 10 rows, take my marker out. So this gets sewn, let's fasten off. You're gonna need a long sewing tail because you're gonna sew all the way around. So, this literally starts right down here. And it's meant to kind of curl up underneath. I'm going to pull this down just a bit. Make sure the corner is just at where your leg starts. Like it's fairly low, but this is meant to, meant to curl up a little bit underneath the chin. And you'll see why once we start um, sewing everything. But we're not gonna sew it on now. We're gonna actually make our cheeks and then um, we can sew it on. I need a pin cushion. I am making a pin cushion. But right now I have to use this. But I was requested to make a pin cushion and I love the idea because I totally need a pin cushion. <laughs> anyway, so now that that's pinned, I'm going to set this aside. We're going to make the cheeks and then you'll understand why we've put it in this position. I better make sure it's in the center. Sometimes when I do things on the side, my stuff ends up not in the middle. Anyway, so let's get to the cheeks. 
so this one um, we're gonna we're gonna change to a 4.5 hook and with white we're gonna start with a magic ring of six single crochets Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. You should have 12 stitches. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. This will bring it up to 18 stitches. Oops, that's number one. And then your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. And your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one with the marker, that's number two, and then your increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. And your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 30 stitches. So for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. So this is what you should have. We're going to start decreasing now. 
we're going to start decreasing very specifically. So, these first two stitches, this is where your marker was, these two are going to get a decrease. And then put your marker in there. You're going to do 26 single crochets. That's my 26 single crochets and you should have two stitches left and I want to each decrease that. That's how we're going to be doing these decreases. The beginning and the, the end. So I should have 28 stitches. I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 28 stitches. Next round is going to be a decrease to start. You're going to do 24 all the way around. You have two stitches left and you're going to decrease that. So 24 single crochets. That's my 24th stitch and I'm going to decrease my last two stitches. And my next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 26 stitches. So this is what we get. We get this. We started our decreases and we're coming in like this but we're not decreasing over here so just this this is gonna give this oh let me reach this is gonna give this effect right here where it comes down where we put the nose and then goes back up so that's the reason we're doing all of this so your next round so when you hold it like this it's gonna it's gonna look like it's weird that you're making things wonky but once you put it into the shape that it's supposed to be in it's not wonky so your next row is gonna obviously start with a decrease You're going to do 22 single crochets and then decrease the last two stitches. That's my 22 single crochets and then my last two stitches get decreased. And then your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So 
So your next round is going to be, um, we're going to start to increase at this point because we need, so I've got the one side, let me show you. So we've got the one side of our cheeks meets up in the middle, find the middle of my head. So the one cheek and then we're going to start increasing now to do the other side. So our first stitch is going to get two single crochets in the same space. Of course mark the first stitch you made. You're going to do 22 single crochets and then increase the last stitch. And then this last stitch is going to get two single crochets for an increase. And now I want you to follow that up with one single crochet in each of these 26 stitches. So your next round is going to be an increase round. So this first stitch is going to get two single crochets in the same space. Mark the first stitch you made. And now we're going to do 24 single crochets. And then the last stitch here gets two single crochets. So when you put it into shape, you can see how it's dipped down and now it's coming back up. So for your next round, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 28 stitches. So your next round again is going to be um, an increase round. So you're going to do two single crochets in, after the first stitch. That's when the marker goes in. I know I keep saying that, but two single crochets in the same space. Then you're going to do 26 single crochets and then increase the last stitch. That's my 26 single crochet and then this last stitch gets the increase. So that is it for what we're doing here. So as you can see we've got this little dip and we've come back up. The next two rows you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch and then we're just going to start to decrease and we're going to close it up so it looks like this guy over here. 
So for the next two rows, you should have 30 stitches. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So this is what it should look like. We're going to start decreasing now, so I want you to do a three single crochet decrease, and this will bring you down to 24 stitches. That's number one with your marker. That is three single crochets, and then your decrease. So I should have 24 stitches, and your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 18 stitches. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So this doesn't get stuffed at all. We're just going to keep it like this. So your last couple of rounds, your first one's going to be one single crochets and a decrease, bringing it down to 12 stitches. And then I want you to follow that up with one single crochet in each of the 12 stitches, and then I'll meet you back here. So that's one single crochet with your marker. You jump right into your decrease. So you can go in and fasten off. We're going to cinch the rest of this shut. And you're going to need a long sewing tail. Sew this to the head. Mine might be a little too long. <laughs> but it's always better to have more than not enough. So that's what you should have right now. So we're going to cinch this with my super long tail. So you're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop.
So when you get around, you can pull that. You're going to have to secure it with a couple of knots. Okay, I have got way too much yarn. So I go back and forth, like, like both ways. <laughs> I don't make any sense here. I'm just trying to concentrate on how much yarn I have. All right, so you can weave. Once you're all set to where you want to start sewing from. I'm just going to weave once and then I'm going to go back to where I'm going to start sewing from because it, I mean, you're sewing with it. So I don't really think weaving is a huge necessity. So let's get all my stuff out of the way. So this gets sewn over this. That's why I say it's got to roll up under here. And then his cheeks get sewn. Let me see if I zoom out a bit. There we go. So his cheeks get sewn down under here. Like that's where you're going to put this. And they get sewn like that. And then we do the nose here, the mouth and whiskers. And this leaves this great big area for his, his eyes. So that's what we're going to do. So this needs to get sewn on first and then we can sew this on because it has to overlap that. It'll make it look like it's all one piece. So now that I got all my belly sewn on, I can sew your cheekies. So just make sure that this dip is in the middle of his head. <laughs> and then this, obviously, not quite at his shoulders, but pretty low. It's hard to show you. So pretty low, but not quite at his shoulders. I can get a finger in there. So that's about where this guy's cheekies are getting sewn on. So that's my cheekies and my belly thing all sewn on. I think we'll make the eyes first, then the teeth, and then we'll just decorate the rest of it. So that'll be next. You still need your white. You're also going to need your black. First, let's do the two black pupils. Um, the reason I say this is because the, uh, the eyes take a little bit longer. So let's just get the, these out of the way. Now, these have to be square. <laughs> no, they don't. But they do. I'll tell you why. When I did round pupils, it did not look like Bugs Bunny. As soon as I put the square pupils in, boom, Bugs Bunny. I have something about the eyes for these dolls that 
you know, you could do whatever you want, though. We're going to chain three. And then I'm going to do two single crochets back because that's all the working stitches I have. Chain one, turn your work, and do two single crochets. That's it. Tiny little square pupil. Fasten off. So you need a bit of a sewing tail. Obviously not much. It's tiny, tiny. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So we'll make our second one and then we'll get on to the whites of our eye. So, that's it for that. We'll get our white. So the whites start with a magic ring. I'm going to my five millimeter for this. And you're going to put nine single crochets in here. That's my nine single crochets. For the next eight rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. So if you're not familiar where your stitches are, I would use a stitch marker. If you are, I'm sure you can just count. So that's my eight rows. This is what it should look like. So we're going to fasten off and we're going to cinch the end closed. So you're going to also need a sewing tail to sew it to the head. So this doesn't get stuffed. Same as, same as everything else. <laughs> So in the front loop, out the front loop. Pop cross, make a knot. Pop across this way, make a knot. So, then your pupil gets sewn on very low, very low and over to the side because you want, you know, if this is going to be your left handed or, so I'm going to sew my pupil on and I'm going to put the pattern on the screen. Um, for the, for the white part, and I'll meet you back here when you've got your second eye done. So 
So I got my two eyeballs already. I just gotta, I'm just gonna tie these pupils at the back and just cut it off. No one's gonna see this part. And you don't have to do this, it's just a safety, safety thing, you know. Child tries to pull that. So these sit kind of turned. So they sit kind of turned. Let me zoom out. It's, it, it was so hard for me the first time to get these eyes set properly. They kind of turn into each other. Do you know what I mean? I think I gotta move this over. So they turn in slightly toward the top. Oh gosh. <laughs> I should probably do this off camera so I get it in the right spot. This is how I screw up. It's hard without the nose and everything in there, but that's about how they go. So, um, I'm just going to leave my pin for now and put the nose in because uh, it can be difficult if your face isn't done. So we just need a bit of pink. So it doesn't matter where you come in, it just matters where you come out. And I'm going to come out um, about this row here. So you have this little bit of gray before I get to the white. And when I do my... I'm probably only going to do three across for the nose. But I'm going to come in down here and I got to turn it and go back and forth. Making a triangle. I think that's good for me, so I'm just going to pop out, probably at the back here. Just make sure this doesn't pull too tight. I think that's my nose. Guess where I came in. If you can manage, I don't know if I have enough, but I'm gonna try to meet up with my pink here at the back. Meet up in the same hole and then tie these together. And that way, some kid can't come along and pull my nose off. Just watch how f hard you pull. And then I can weave. So this is just 
safety that I prefer to use. You by no means have to do any of this. It's a lot easier to see what the face is going to look like before we sew our eyes on. So I'm going to take some black. Now this isn't the black that I was using for this. This is thinner black. Um, this is... Oh gosh, I don't even know what this is. But it's just a thinner black than the black that I had. I'm going to do the mouth. I don't think I have enough for the whiskers, but I'm just going to do the mouth for now. So again, it doesn't matter where you come in, but try to come out this hole that you were using for the nose. Just leave a um, bit of this hanging out on the side. So we do a typical mouth. we would do. So teeth are going to be in the way. So you just have to make the mouth and not really worry about what's going on in the middle. Because you won't really see that. So again, I'm just going to pop out wherever I pop out. So I'm not going to pull this tight because I want it to be loose so it looks like he's smiling. The teeth are going here anyway, so. And again, you can meet up or you can just cut it off. You can do whatever you want. So I think it's safe to say that we could probably sew our eyes on now that you have an idea of Bugs Bunny's face. So now that our eyes are sewn on, we can do the um, whiskers. So get whatever black you're using. I need quite a bit. So I just kept the whiskers in the cheeks, in the cheek area. And I'm going to use the same hole going in and out where I was before. Let me move everything out of the way. So again, it doesn't really matter where you come in. I had to turn this guy. So I'm going to pop out where everything else comes in and out. Again, just um, make sure you leave some hanging. And then you can make the decision on what you're doing. But wherever you go, you need to come back to the same hole that everything else is coming in and out of. But how you do your whiskers is completely up to you.
And then this one, I go into the gray. I'm just gonna pop out the back. Like that. And then this guy that I started with, I'm gonna pop him out through the back, going down the same hole. So, last but not least, we got to do the little teeth, and not, not little teeth. We got to do the big teeth and the little tuft of hair up here, and then we're all done. So, grab your white. So, we also have to do the tail. I'm just going to use a little bit of scrap white. I'm just using the scrap white now. I used that other little roll, which was about 1.9 ounces or something. So, now I'm just going to use some scrap pieces to make my teeth and my five millimeter. Uh, we have to do the tail. It's another thing that's left. And I don't think I ever showed you the tail. So that's his little tail at the back. I never showed it to him. <laughs> you know, generally flip them over, but anyway, that's the tail. So the teeth, the tail, and the tuft of hair. This is what we have left. So the teeth are pretty quick. You're going to do a magic ring of six single crochets. And for the next four rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of the six stitches. That's it. That's our teeth. You got to do two of them. So that's my four rows. I'm going to fasten off. Um, this doesn't get stuffed either. So fasten off with a cinching and sewing tail. So I did not stuff it and I did not sew the whole tooth down. I just sewed the top down. Oh, we're not cinching. We're, um, Whip stitching. I said cinching, didn't I? I meant whip stitch. And that's our tooth. So I'm going to make the other one and then meet you right back here so we can start the tail. So uh, I'm going to start with white for the tail. Use my five millimeter and I'm going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these six stitches. Because we need to put a point on this.
So your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's one single crochet the hard way because I got my little straggler in there. And then your next stitch gets the increase of so two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. You're only going to get three times around. So that's a total of nine stitches. So when you don't start your stuff traditionally, it generally cuts it in half. So for the next round, round three, you're just going to do one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. So I'm just going to count to nine because I know where my stitches are. I don't know what white I'm using now. I just grabbed scrap white, but I don't like it. <laughs> the next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. Everything is three times around. So your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And then your next round you're going to follow that up with one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So your next couple of rows, this one's first one is going to be four single crochets and an increase, bringing you up to 18 stitches. And then I want you to do your one single crochet round for your, the row after. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 21 stitches and then I want you to follow that up with one single crochet in each stitch.
Your last two rows in the white are going to be six single crochets and an increase, bringing you up to 24 stitches, and then one single crochet in each of those after that, and then we can fasten off. So I've done my last two rows. I'm going to fasten off. Um, this doesn't get stuffed and the gray piece doesn't get stuffed, but when they get sewn together, then they get stuffed a little bit. So fasten off. Um, you just need to decide which one is going to get the sewing tail. So just set that aside for now and Grab your gray, and you're going to chain nine. And you're going to do eight single crochets back up. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to skip this first stitch and you're going to go into the next one and you're going to do five single crochets across. You've got two stitches left, you're going to decrease those. Chain one, turn your work. Shove six stitches. I want you to do one single crochet in each stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to skip this stitch and you're going to go into here and you're going to do three single crochets across. You have two stitches left. You're going to decrease them. Chain one, turn your work. You should have four stitches, and for the next three rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these four stitches. This is what you should have so far. So again, you're going to skip the first stitch, you're going to go into the next stitch, you're going to do one single crochet, and these last two you're going to decrease. Chain one, turn your work. So now you're going to SC2 tog, which is just decreasing these two. Chain one, turn your work. And in this top part, you're going to slip stitch and fasten off. So, um, I'm using my white to sew with, so I don't really need, just need to weave with this. So this part's flat, obviously. The other part is not, obviously. So, um, 
I whip stitched. You can't see it just because the way I sewed it on. But I whip stitched this closed. Again, there's no stuffing. We're going to put a little tiny bit of stuffing in. Um, once we uh, start to close it up, these two pieces. So this gray is smaller than this white, which makes it um, curve like that. Because you're gonna sew this to the, you're gonna sew this to every corner. This gray, which means you're gonna force it to curve up like this, and that's exactly what we want. So, um, I've got all three sides done. I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in here, but I don't want to put much because I want to keep this bend. I did not sew the bottom. Um, only because I end up whip stitching it anyway, so. Very little. And I didn't stuff up here, I just stuffed here. So well, that's my little tail. So the white goes on the outside. And then I just mattress stitched it to uh, just mattress stitched it to his bum. Whoops. So I'm going to make a slip knot on one end, like I usually do. Still got to sew his teeth on too. So I've attached, I don't know if my camera recorded because my card filled up, I had to switch my card, so. Um, make sure you're in the middle of his butt and you can go as low or as high as you want. And I just match your stitch, like I said. Pretty sure you heard that part before my camera cut out. I think I'm going to go pretty high on this, up that way, just to pull it out a little bit. So, because the first mattress stitch will make it boing out like this, we need to mattress stitch the top as well to pull it back up. So that's not as good as my last one, but um, I think I'm going to go back this way again and I'm going to go 
out further and up higher. All we gotta do left is sew our teeth on. And this guy's gonna be done. So, I think he looks better without his teeth, but it would not be Bugs Bunny without his teeth. So, unfortunately, <laughs> we have to ruin his cute little face by putting these big gagglers on here. So you can put them wherever you want. But they're pretty big. That's just, it's just Bugs Bunny. That's big teeth. Um, I didn't sew it all down, I just did the tops. Because it's bad enough I had to do it in the first place. So that's his teeth. You just gotta puff them up so they don't look so long. So the last thing to do is his tuft of hair. That's it. So you can take your, if, if you made a bobbin, you can take whatever's left of your bobbin. Just wrap a few times around your fingers. However many times you want and then just cut it and then these little pieces here you fold them in half and then you just grab a post with your with your hook put that on your hook you're gonna pull through yarn over and pull through that loop to make a knot and that's how you're gonna attach your little tufts of hair So you can do as little or as much as you want, and then I, um, I opened all of these. So after I got it all unraveled, I took my wire brush, just a pet brush, and I just rubbed it a little bit till it got furry, partially. Like I really didn't do it a whole lot. So that's furry, but still kind of curly. And then I just gave it a trim. And then I messed it up. And that's this little tuft of hair at the top. So. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.